Hi, so how's it going? Um, here is a brand new tutorial for you. Here are the paints that I use, which I will put a link for, or at least list in the video description below. And these are the particular tools that I'm going to use for today's tutorial. Now I have cut myself out a, um, it's a stencil, but it's like a sticker. So it's a vinyl stencil. Um, and I just cut it out using one of my cutters. Um, and I have made myself a silhouette of my daughter, of my youngest daughter. So um, you just kind of have to, I don't know if you've ever worked with these before, but you have to stick it down and then like take any kind of card and like rub it down onto your canvas. I'm using something up underneath the canvas so it doesn't, you know, warp the canvas or anything. And you just kind of rub it on and then I found this a little difficult to get off without um, without peeling the whole thing so I just kind of held it down and peeled it off this way now there are for sure other ways that you can do this if you don't have a cutter um, you can just print out a silhouette or you could draw on a silhouette um, on some paper and then maybe paste it down or use some double-sided tape or something like that but for those interested I will be offering um, some of these different shapes in my Etsy shop and I'll put a link in this video's description below on how you can find my shop all right and this is just a little quick tip if you do so happen to dent or warp your canvas a little bit you can spritz the back and then use a blow dryer and just kind of dry up the water and it should pop right back to um, its straight self for you now if you have one of my stencils you could definitely use that to find your center uh, but if you don't that's not a problem just grab a ruler and go ahead and mark from corner to corner of your canvas now this is an 8x8 eight eight canvas that I'm using here today and my cutout is um, about five and a half inches um, now I'm going to go ahead and get my compass out. This is my Helix compass. I love this thing. It does have a little metal tip, so it will poke a small hole in your canvas. But I'm going to use um, a box or something hard and sturdy underneath the canvas just so it doesn't completely destroy your canvas or anything. One little pinhole doesn't bother me too much. So I go ahead and I use my, uh, my compass. And I just draw on some concentric circles in no particular measurements or anything. You want to have a, um, a palette and you want to get yourself a rag. And I'm going to go ahead and start with my second to largest tool. And I do have my four lines on my tool so I can find my center perfectly. All right, and if you don't understand what I'm talking about with the four lines, definitely check out my last video where I show and explain how to best find your center dot or best place your center dot. All right, so I'm going to use my lines as my guide, and I'm going to go ahead and place my center dot on. And then there is a little bit of paint there in the middle, and I kind of just shift it around with the edge of my tool. First paint that I'm going to go around the center dot with is Mother of Pearl and it is a Martha Stewart paint and it's super pretty. Now yeah I did want to mention that I always hold my canvas at an angle. Um, it's just for the camera. You don't actually have to hold your canvas. I have had that question before. And then I did go ahead and mark um, the center of each side of my canvas as well, just to get a good T um, to line up my first row. That's the most important row that you need to line up correctly. Once you have that, you're, you're pretty good to go. So this one looks pretty good. And I'm gonna move on to the color called Party Streamer. And then I am going to also go ahead and pour in my palette um, some antique silk. Now the Party Streamer is a little bit of a brighter pink. And I will later on tone that down with some top dots. But I'm going to use that for my first row of pink around the white. 
and you just want to place your dots right in between on the outer edge there of each of the previous row. So they're just a little offset of each other. Next is my purple tool and I'm going to go with the gold, the same gold that I use in the center. And I'm going to go ahead and put one dot on each of the guidelines. And that just helps keep your dots um, nice and in a row. And then I go right in between them just to have nice equal spacing. And again, just use the edge of your tool to push around any paint that looks um, off to you. And then go ahead and go right in between each of those. So just like the previous row, you're going to go just kind of offset each of the next row of dots. Next will be my light blue tool. And I'm going back with the Mother of Pearl paint. And I'm just going to be doing the same process. I had a little bit of a wonky dot there, so I had to clean it up. Um, but yeah, so just do the same process. And then here at a point, um, the placement of this last dot here, it's halfway on the vinyl and halfway on the canvas. So it left a little bit of a jagged edge. Um, it wasn't a nice crisp circle. Um, so I just kind of added a little bit of extra paint to the edge of my tool and just, you know, dabbed it on there a little bit and it worked out perfectly fine. All right, and this is moving on to a nail stylus dotting tool. Now I number mine, this is um, what I call a number four. It's just the second to the largest of the ones that I have. And you just want to find the center of the outer edge of your large dot there and put a dot and then you don't actually change the pressure in which you're pushing your tool the dots just get smaller on their own so just kind of eyeball and like run down find the center put a dot and then dot all the way down hugging that large dot there go down one side redip your tool redot that first initial dot and then dot all the way down the other side and the main thing is just to, you know, kind of hug that larger dot there. That just keeps your dots nice and in line. And just dot down to however many you want. And then going on um, to my size 2 nail stylus. And now I'm going to fill in some of the little tiny blank areas with um, using my size 2 nail stylus and just putting in some more gold between the gold dots. You don't have to do that if you don't want to. I just wanted to really fill it up. I love the pearl paint. It's so pretty. All right, so I'm going to let that guideline, that circle guideline there that I drew on with my compass. I'm going to let that be my guide here for these, um, this ring of dots. I would have to say the best tip for doing um, rings of dots would be to stick to one side or the other of your um, drawn on guidelines. All right, and finishing up that ring, and it was a little tight, but that's okay. No one will notice that later on once the whole design is finished. Now, I am packing this design in, but um, if you don't, you, you really want to be able to see the crisp lines of your stencil when you pull it off. So now you can ignore that if you're not using a stencil. You just want to paint the painting and, um, and, and leave it as it is. Then you don't really have to fill in all this. But what I did was I went on and I used my um, small white tool and I went on and put a dot of the brighter pink uh, in between each of the little white lacy bridges. And then I'm just using my smallest nail stylus and kind of put a couple extra little dots in there 
around the little bridges and then one down in between each of the little bridges. So just really filling in that space. All right, using my pink tool, I'm going to go with the gold. And now I'm just going to be doing a second ring. So just offset your dots and they should fit perfectly fine. And then I'm going to stick with rings for a little bit and try to get all the way out to the edge of the silhouette using rings. So that's really nice, tight design. You know, the point is to be able to see the definition of the lines of the nose and the lips and all that. They're, they're soft lines, so you want to be able to really be able to distinguish those from the rest of the painting. So I am definitely trying to keep it nice and tight here. Um, so rings was a good choice for uh, the edge of the stencil. And then I'm going to go with the next row um, using my light purple tool. And I'm going to go with the uh, pearl white paint, uh, Mother of Pearl, I guess is what it's called. And again, just offsetting, again, just kind of right, it should all fit since you've got the first ring and you should be able to fit the next couple rings in. If you hear a noise, that's my, I got my kerosene heater going. I'm so cold here in Cincinnati. We just got some more snow and I am so over the snow. It's beautiful and all, but I am ready for spring. <laughs> so I've got me and Paulo, we're out here uh, trying to stay warm. All right, and going on to my green tool and going with a ring of gold. And again, they should fit just just fine. I didn't hug extremely tight there. I used a slightly larger tool and I knew that they would eventually overlap if I didn't kind of stay a little bit away. And then so for that gap I am going to fill it in with um, some of the uh, antique silk. And that was using my smallest nail stylus. So this is my third from the largest tool from my tool set. You want to get your tool good and coated. And that little doll up there, that's perfectly fine. Just leave it right there. Don't, don't wipe that off. I'm using my guidelines that I've drawn on my tool to help me to make sure I get these dots good and centered where they need to be. and just kind of brush around, uh, push around the paint that's in the center if you find that it's um, that it's bubbly or in any weird way. I just kind of push it around with the edge of my tool. Or you could use a nail stylus and swirl it out. That would work as well, and I do do that sometimes. Um, so I went ahead and put dots in between each of the corner dots. So there's eight. And then I'm going to go ahead and put a dot right in between each of those. So there's going to be a total of 16 large pink dots going around the, um, the rings there. And I'm just eyeballing these. Now if you had my 16 slice stencil, then you could just go ahead and draw on all the, uh, the 16 guidelines. Uh, and be sure of your placement, but I was just eyeballing it. I like to show that there's other ways to do it than just having stencils. <laughs> stencils are nice though, they make nice quick work of, of uh, getting to the dots. Alright, so for the next row, I'm going to grab the, uh, the white tool and I'm just going to do my best to eyeball the uh, the placement. You just want to look for the very center of the outer edge of those larger pink dots there and place a dot of your mother of pearl paint um, and then grab my size 5 nail stylus and I'm just gonna hug that large dot and dot all the way down as far as I can go 
down one side, re-dip the tool, and then go ahead and dot all the way down to the base of the other side. kind of hang over the edge a little bit. You just do your best to, to dot it the best you can. And don't stress about it because it's going to be beautiful no matter what. I am grabbing my uh, dark blue tool and I'm going to put um, gold dots going um, from largest to smallest going back out around that pink dot. So I put my largest one down uh, at the base and then I'm using my uh, very smallest tool in my set. It's the black tool uh, for the next dot. And then for the rest of those, I'm going to go ahead and grab my uh, size 5 nail stylus, which is my largest one. And I think I get about four or five-ish dots going up each side there. And just go ahead and do that to each one of those. And don't forget, you can always pause my tutorials and catch up with me. And then for the next one here, I'm grabbing my light purple tool, going with the Mother of Pearl paint. I'm going to put one large dot there in each of the corners. Obviously can't do any of the other dots with, with that tool. So, um, And then I, I go ahead and move on to my pink tool and um, sticking with the mother of pearl going to put a dot to either side of the larger dot there the next tool will be the white tool for either side of those and then i will use my size 5 nail stylus and go ahead and dot all the way down to the center of that gold bridge and then we're going to do the same process here um, with each of the other ones. Now we can't fit the large dots again, so we're just going to go ahead with the um, the white tool and just put a dot to either side there of the uh, of the golden bridges that are heading down. And then grab your nail stylus and dot from that large dot all the way down in that little V there, in the, into that little bridge. So it's just a whole other uh, another layer going on here. Hey, if you're new to my channel, I have over 60 step-by-step um, -step dot mandala tutorials for you to check out. And of course, I would love to have you as a subscriber. Alright, adding a little bit of flair here. I'm just kind of uh, free flowing, not really hugging towards the uh, the previous rows or anything, but just um, I go down into the bridge and dot from the center out, uh, going in one direction, and then I go back to the center and dot out going in the other direction, and then I do one more going out towards the corner of the canvas, and then I just do that in the corners, and that's how I leave it. Now, you want to make sure your paint is really good and dry before you attempt to do some top dots. So I was just double checking and my paint was good and dry. So I want to tone down the Party Streamer Pink paint with some of the Antique Silk paint. It's a really nice, light, um, soft and feminine pink paint. So I really, really um, wanted it to be the star of the painting. So I'm going to go ahead and add top dots to all of the brighter pink dots. And um, I am pretty much double dotting each of these because I really wanted a good thick amount on there as well. And some of these paints, that's just what you have to do. You just have to double dot it. So I use my, uh, my white tool for the middle ring. And then I'm going to grab my big, large 
yellow tool and going to put a dot right in the middle of each of the large pink dots there. So you are all finished if you do not have a stencil or anything to peel up. And it's a beautiful painting and you should definitely be proud of what you have created. Now if you do have a stencil to peel up, then stick with me here. I'm going to use my blow dryer not to dry my paint, but I'm going to um, just loosen up the glue of the, you know, it's like a sticker basically. So I want to loosen it up really good before I start peeling. This is the fun part. So I'm going to start peeling off my silhouette. Again, you do have to make sure your paint is good and dry um, for this round as well. But I love how the sticker comes off. It is so beautiful. I love this little silhouette. I think it's so pretty. And I think what my very favorite part of it is, is that you get two projects out of one. I went ahead and grabbed a smaller canvas and I left mine white, but you could definitely paint it black if you wanted or any other color. And I go ahead and stick down my silhouette head there and just make sure there's no kinks before you press it all down. And then you can varnish that and you have two projects out of one, which is fantastic. I think that's so pretty and the little eyelashes and everything. Love it. Guys, the possibilities of things to create are absolutely endless. I'm so excited. Cannot wait to do another one of these. As a matter of fact, why don't you leave me a comment in the comment section below and let me know what you would like to see me do a silhouette of in a future tutorial. Well, that is it for this one. Thank you all so much for watching. I love you all so much. See you next time.